Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Now this is actually going to be a series devoted entirely to spinning your own yarn from fleece. Now I am going to be doing a lot more in-depth tutorials later on in, in the series including how to go from fleece straight from the animal to prepared um, to blending colours, to using different tools, etc. But I thought in this first episode, I'm going to do the very, very basics. And I'm going to be talking about different types of yarn, etc. So it's going to be quite an in-depth series. I have been planning it for ages, um, but I'm finally getting around to actually filming the first episode today. This is about the eighth time that I've tried to film this, um, just because there's so much to, to talk about. So the first thing that I want to talk about uh, is what to spin on, in other words, the drop spindle. Now this is just one version of a drop spindle. Um, I will be showing you another version, but again that's going to be later on uh, when I'm talking about more in-depth um, information later on in the series. This is the drop spindle that I, or the ver the type of drop spindle that I would highly recommend to a beginner. They are widely available on Amazon, eBay, etc. for very low prices. This is called a top whirl spindle. This disc here, this is the whirl and this is the shaft. And the reason that I would highly recommend this to a beginner is because of this hook here. This is going to make your life so much easier. Um, I would highly recommend this. I would also highly recommend to start out uh, going to a yarn shop, going to a crafting shop, or even going to Amazon and picking up something like this. This is actually from a bag. I'll show you the bag. There we go. These are machine milled tops or roving. I'll get into the difference between roving and tops in a later video as well. This is just purely getting you started with spinning. Um, you can get these from, from the felting section in most craft shops um, or like I say from Amazon. They'll either be described as roving or as tops. There is a difference between the two but again I'll explain that later in a, another video where I'm talking about the different yarn types. For now, we're just going to start with getting you started on spinning and we'll, we'll talk about different yarn types later on. So to start spinning, you're going to want something like this. This is just, like I say, from the bag, comes in a little bird's nest like this. This is just unknotted and stretched out. So once you have your roving or your top that you've purchased from on either online or from the craft store, all you want to do is separate a small bit out. As you can see, it pulls apart really easily. And then take one of the ends, doesn't really matter which end, one of the ends and you want to do something called drafting. What that is, is you're pinching the end of the yarn and you are just pulling it out. You're just pulling it out like this. Hopefully the camera will focus. There we go. So I'm just continuing to just pull out the ends of the fibre so it looks a bit like that. So basically you're just thinning it out to the thickness that you want to spin at. Now don't worry about whether you're spinning thick or thin yarn at the moment. This is this first episode is literally just getting you to have yarn well, to getting you to have fibre on your spindle to produce yarn. So what you want to do is once you've drafted out a little bit, I'm just gonna draft out a little bit more by pinching and pulling, pinching and pulling, pinching and pulling, is get your spindle. And this is the, uh, the the time where I recommend this hook because this is what makes it so much easier. All you want to do is take a little bit of your pre-drafted yarn, hook it underneath the hook like that, bring it up and pinch. So you're holding 
So it's created a little hook in there, a little loop in there. So you're holding it together like that. And then all you want to do is turn your drop spindle to introduce a bit of twist. There. Okay. Now I'm going to pinch that twist just to stop it from travelling up the yarn. And I'm going to make sure that I have the thickness that I want in the drafting. Pinch, release, let the twist carry up, carry on turning my spindle. This is just getting me, me started. You'll get, you'll see what I mean by pinching and letting the twist carry up now. Pinch the twist, move my hand up, pinch again, let the twist carry up. Carry on spinning a bit more. This, this is getting more twist into the yarn, into the fibres. Pinch to stop the twist from going up. And here, now I've got up to this point here, this is where I can start to think about my drafting. So what I'm doing is I'm pinching hold of the fibre and I'm just... Focus camera. I'm pulling my hands apart, so I'm pulling out the fibres until I get the thickness that I want. <clears throat> and when you're starting, don't worry about the thickness. You'll get the hang of this, but thickness isn't that important when you're starting. You soon learn how much to draft out and how thick or thin that will make your, your finished plied yarn. You're, you're finished yarn. So just release and let the twist carry up. Now you can see it's thinned it out. So I'm twisting. I'm letting it drop. I'm, I'm actually um, resting the drop spindle against my, the table and my leg to stop it from spinning. Um, as you get more used to it and again in later videos I'll show you how I'm spinning quicker um, just letting the spindle drop to the floor but I'll talk about that in a later video this is again just getting you started just teaching you how to spin the pinching the fibre separating the fibre with your fingers pulling it out pinching letting the spin go up the fibre Twisting to get more spin in, more twist in, pinch, pull, pinch, release. Okay, so we're getting to a point now where you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to wind some of the, the yarn here onto the shaft. So I'm just going to do that by looping it around the shaft, bringing it up to the bottom of the wheel and just rolling it on, leaving enough so that I can actually go back and hook what's left onto that hook, adding a bit more twist, pinching to stop the twist from going up into the fleece pulling to draft out some of the fleece into the thickness that I want, pinching to stop the twists from going up too far, releasing to let the twist carry up. So the actions are spin, pinch, pull or draft, pinch, release. Let's do that again. Twist to introduce twist. Pinch to stop it from going up too far or before I'm ready. Pull to draft out to the thickness that I want. Pinch to stop the twist from going up too far. Release. And I also like to just twist that as well just to encourage the twist to go up the yarn. 
once I get to a certain point, unhook, wind onto the shaft, rehook. So again, spin to introduce twist, pinch to stop twist from travelling up, pull to get the thickness that I want, pinch to stop the twist from travelling up, release and just encourage the twist up. Spin to introduce twist, pinch to stop the twist from travelling before I'm ready, pull to get the thickness that I want, pinch, release. Once more and then I'll wind on again, so twist, pinch, pull, pinch, release. Unwind and wind it onto the spindle. I usually wrap it round the hook a couple of times just to make sure it's fully secure. So one more time, twist, pinch, draft, sometimes this happens where it gets a bit too tight to drag, as you can see it's not releasing as easily as it should. So what I do there is I actually untwist slightly because that means I've got too many fibres trapped in this section. So I'm going to untwist it slightly. And then pull to draft it out a little bit more. Just thin it down. There we go. And that's about right. Twist. Pinch. Draft up. Pinch. Release and encourage the twist up. Twist to introduce, spin to introduce twist. Pinch, pull to draft. Pinch up at the top. This is the, called the drafting area, by the way. So for, I'm pinching in the, the drafting area to stop the pinch from travelling up into the draft. I only want the twist to go up the yarn where I've decided that's how thick I want it to be. Okay, add a bit more twist. Knowing how much twist to add as well, that is just something that comes with practice. Because I'm showing you the drafting method here, which is the pinch, pull to increase the draft, pinch, let the twist carry up, um, I'm not spinning uh, this as I would normally do. So I'm not showing you the full method um, with the spindle, but I will be doing that in another episode where... I want. To, I just want to introduce the pinch, pull, pinch, release method to you first, and then once we've once you've learned this bit, uh -huh, then I'll introduce other things. Now, this has just happened. I've split my arm. This is not a problem. This is something that you'll come across quite regularly, especially if you're learning, because if you go too thin, so this sometimes happens, and the spindle will drop and roll away, which is one reason why it's called a drop spindle. If this happens and your your uh, fibre breaks, it's not the end of the world. This is uh, all you need to do to fix it. If you fluff out the end of the fibre that is on your spindle, and you fluff out the end of the fibre that is in your hand, you lay the two together. So you just lay them together like this. Pinch where they meet and then just twist your spindle like 
And once again, pinch, draft, make sure it's all smooth, release, let the twist carry up, add a bit more twist. And here, where the join is, keep adding the twist. And the fibres, as they twist, are grabbing hold of each other and creating a join. And there you go, you can hardly see where the, where the, where the join is. Once I've created a join, I like to just wind it on. So I don't have the weight of the spindle and the fiber um, on that join. It's absolutely fine, I just prefer that I find that I prefer to do it that way and then I'm not risking it splitting again. And then I just carry on, so pinch, draft, pinch again, release, twist, pinch, draft, pinch again and release. As you're spinning, as a beginner, you'll probably find that your spindle might start to spin back on itself. If that happens, all you need to do is just park it between your legs, use the shaft as a brake, pop it between your, your legs or against the, your leg in a table or something like that. Just something, you know, wedge it in just so it doesn't, doesn't spin back. Again, in an, the, in an Probably in the next episode, I'll show you how I spin um, using the just the just gravity, and I don't tend to park. I just tend to let it go, but that's because I am used to uh, doing it quickly. I spin, draft, release, spin, oops, spin, draft, release spin, draft, release and I can keep going and do a lot in a short period of time so I can I actually end up doing quite a few pull draft releases whilst it's still on the first spin but as you're learning it's easier just to give it a twist, park it and then pinch, draw it out to the right length the right width, sorry, even. Draw it out so it's the right width. Pinch, release, spin, park, pinch, draft, pinch, release. And then as you get to a certain length, again, just wind it onto the shaft. And this creates a single ply yarn. And I'll talk about plies again in another video. But as I say in this video, I just want you to get the hang of the pinch, spin, draft, pinch, release technique. And this is just one method of spinning. I'll talk about other methods later. And as I'm watching this through my phone camera, oh, now here, before I carry on here again, I can tell that if I let this go now, the twist will carry on up, but this little section here will either be extremely thin or will snap. So before I do anything, I'm actually going to bring this back down pinch this section here and redraft this just so it's not as thin as that and then I'll add my twist in and I'm just going to roll onto the shaft so you can see what I'm doing before I release there we go so I've added my twist in Pinch to stop it from travelling up, pinch to prevent it from going into the draft, and then release there. 
and that's created a safe hold rather than it risking it snapping. I don't think that's going to snap now, so I can carry on. So pinch to stop the twist from travelling up, draft it to the width that you want. And you don't have to go really thin. I'm going really thin because that's what I'm used to. You can, if you want, create a really thick single. So, for example, if I don't draft out as much, if I draft out, say, that much, and then add the twist, you can see I'm creating a much thicker single up here. So I can see I'm creating a much thicker single. Now, you can either do that to create a thick single, if you don't want to ply. Um, but I will talk about specialty yarns again in the, another video. But don't worry if your yarns end up looking really thick in some places and really thin in, in, in others. They will. Getting the thickness of the yarn is just a matter of practice. Um, sorry if you can hear the birds. There we go. Um, just keep practicing, and you'll end up. You'll learn how to maneuver the yarn to get the thickness that you want consistently. And also, you know, it shows that it's handmade. Don't worry if it's not perfect. So I'm just going to wind this on. And I'm just going to finish off this bit of fibre here. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to wind that on again to the shaft. And then to uh, park it up, if you like, if you finish for the day, what I normally do is I wind it round the hook a few times and that just keeps it secure means I know where I am and I can carry on so this is what we've spun so far in the next episode like I say we'll be looking at spinning in a bit more depth and I'll be talking about some different techniques etc and keep your eye on the series. I really hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think, as always. And I shall see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.